My name is Jennifer Angus and I'm an artist. I live in Madison, Wisconsin, where I teach at the University of Wisconsin-Madison. And specifically, I teach textile design. Now, interestingly enough, in textile design, a huge motif in a lot of textiles are flowers. Probably about 80% of the market is flowers. So I think about flowers quite a bit, but actually the main medium of my work is insects. And that's a great connection to flowers too, because we know insects as pollinators. Uh, so the insects that you see behind me are actually cicadas, and those aren't pollinators, but the beetles that are under the domes, the, the glass bell jars, those are pollinators. And we tend to think of bees as the number one, which that would be true, but beetles and flies and other small mammals are also pollinators. One of the most common questions I get asked is why insects, especially when I teach textile design. And the answer is, is that I came to insects through my interest in textiles. I was doing research in Northern Thailand in the area known as the Golden Triangle, where the borders of Thailand, Laos and Myanmar, formerly known as Burma, meet up. I was studying traditional dress and came upon a garment, it's a shawl actually, that had a fringe and upon that fringe were were strung green metallic beetles. And well, not the beetle itself, but their wings, their hard outside wings that are known as elytra. And to me, I just couldn't believe they were real. I had never thought of insects as being beautiful beyond butterflies. And so it was a revelation to learn about these beetles. I really kind of became obsessed with insects. Yet my first love, is pattern. And as I've said, I teach textile design. So one day I had that aha moment that I think every artist hopes to have. And I decided I'm going to take the insects and I'm going to put them in patterns. And as soon as I had that idea and acted upon it in a, in a gallery setting, the response was quite remarkable. This was a gut feeling that this was a right, the right thing to do, but I didn't know why. And I heard many people saying, oh, I see they put up a new wallpaper, but I don't see the art. And I would watch people walk up to the wall, discover that that pattern was made of insects, and then literally take a step back. And I realized, ah, there's tension here. Tension between what we think we know, a pattern, this is wallpaper, and then the discovery. And what's that one thing? If we have a wallpaper, that suggests a house. What's that one thing we don't want in our house? Insects. So the, there are some three, I'll, I'll say three most common questions. Are the insects real? Yes, they're real. Did I color them? Because often they're very bright colors. No, I didn't color them. I'm gonna take credit for mother nature's work. And I often say I'm crazy, but I'm not crazy enough to paint them all. And then people are curious as to whether I've collected them myself. These particular ones, I have not. Most of them come from specimen dealers. And then the others are caught by the um, people, the, the indigenous people who live in that area who actually make a livelihood through this. And I always talk about insect collecting as being a sustainable activity because insects will thrive as long as they have their habitat. And certainly there are insects on the endangered species list, but it's not because of over collection. It's because of climate change, loss of habitat and pesticides. The botanical matter that you see under many of the jars, um, some of it I have ordered online, but a lot of it is from Wisconsin. There is milkweed, which now we're speaking in October, this is perfect time to be collecting milkweed. I'm very interested in goldenrod because of the gall. And to me, those galls, so what happens is there's a fly that lays its eggs um, in the stem of the goldenrod. The goldenrod kind of adapts to this growing larvae and creates a kind of, I think of it as a Dr. Seuss-like pot. 
the holes that you see in the goldenrod gall are birds who have packed in, in to, to get that larvae. Uh, this installation has been up more than a year, which is very unusual for my work. Uh, one of its hallmarks, I would say, is its ephemeral nature, that it's up for a matter of months and then it disappears. So this has definitely been a longer run and eventually it will come down. And a common question I get asked is, what happens to the insects? The insects will go onto uh, foam boards and they will be placed into storage bins and they will go back to my studio and be in wait until the next installation. So the insects are reused again and again. Um, some of these, certainly the large clear winged cicadas, almost 20 years. So I hope that when people come and see this installation, they may leave thinking about insects differently. And that's part of why I've chosen not to use butterflies. We all know butterflies are beautiful, but look at these cicadas, look at the lace-like veins in their wings. They truly are remarkable.